All right, let's dive into all things MCAT car section. In this video, we are going to go over a week by week, three month plan to gradually master the car section because this does not happen overnight. This is a really freaking hard section. We're also going to cover my specific cars timing strategy and compare it to another option. So I'll give you two kind of like ideas for how you want to time cars on test day. And we're going to talk about how I tracked my daily progress and what my master list looked like and just so many things. This is going to be so good. So buckle up. If cars is overwhelming you and you've like started it and it's like not improving, you're going to have a billion ideas just bursting with ideas on how to improve after watching this. Or if you haven't gotten started, you're going to have a really good, like, good plan from day one to master cars. Okay. If you're new here, my name is Maggie. I scored a 516 on the MCAT. So I'm really proud of that. Um, I really nerd out when it comes to talking about study strategies. Um, so MCAT cars or the car section specifically was something that I knew would be the death of me if I did not like just practice it every single day and figure out how to do it well. I ended up getting a 128 on the section on the real thing. <laughs> and not to make excuses, but I took the shortened version during COVID and it was only like six and a half hours. And I swear that screwed me up. I got a 519 on my last practice exam and a 516 on the real thing. So take that as you will. I think I was meant to get a 519, but you know, COVID or maybe it doesn't even matter. Okay, moving on. I got a 128. So this is how I got from holy moly. It takes me 45 minutes to read one passage and I still get all but like maybe one question right to 128. <laughs> First up, week by week plan. And you can go ahead and go to the link below and get your copy of this three month MCAT study schedule. It has all the sections not just the cars but on the side i have the weekly car strategy um so you don't even have to take notes you can just download this free three month study template you can tweak it as needed based on how long you're actually studying so i studied for five weeks or no i studied for five months and shortly after i made this so i made this like week by week plan pretty like, shortly after doing the mcat if that makes sense like i didn't take it four years removed so anyway week one First week, you want to focus on learning the strategies that are explained in the books. So all those MCAT books, whatever brand of content review books you decide, they're going to have a whole book dedicated to cars. And I bet you're thinking, or maybe you already have like skipped that book and you're like, I need to read the science books. I don't have time to read how to read basically, but I highly like do this, like just do it and get through all those chapters, just like you would for your other sections on the MCAT because this is where you get a baseline of ideas to of like ideas for strategies when you are tackling a car's passage. So first week, like focus on reading the chapters. Do not skip it. All the chapters will probably have some like practice um, either within the chapters or at the end of the chapter. So just devour those the same that you are those science chapters for your content review. If there aren't any practice like like no practice in any form in the chapters, then I would recommend going to Jack Weston and that first week, like read a chapter and then just do one car's passage. Don't time yourself, nothing. Um, that's just, there's probably practice within your chapters, but if not Jack Weston, that's your go-to resource. So then week two, pretty much same thing. You're not gonna like get through all the chapters in one week. So continue to read the chapters of that car's book. Do the practice either in the book or from Jack Weston, just one per day. And what you can add in week two is just timing yourself, but don't give yourself a cutoff. Just know how long it takes you to do one passage and the questions from start to finish. And it doesn't matter. Like I want you to take 45 minutes. I'm not even kidding. Like I remember sitting down and like dissecting the passage and then like taking a really long time to answer the questions and taking like 40 ish minutes to do it because I was trying to apply the strategies that I just learned and like really comprehend. It's just really freaking hard. Okay. So like, honestly, like it's a good sign if on week two, you're taking 45 minutes because the plan is going to like slowly like wean you down to the timing you need. So please don't rush it and try to like time yourself and do it in 10 minutes on week two. It's not going to set you up for success. So add in timing, but don't have a cutoff. Just, you just want to know where you're at. 
The third week of cars is continuing to apply the strategies, but now you can give yourself like a cutoff of 30 minutes. So if you are for all of week two, you're like, all right, I time myself and it's taking me like 45 minutes, honestly. So for week two, keep doing that. Great. Week three, try to just give yourself that time cap of 30 minutes to read the passage and answer all the questions. So that is the little, we're slowly starting to wean down the time, but still 30 minutes is like literally triple what you have on the exam. So still giving yourself enough time to practice those strategies you're reading in the content review books for the cars topic section. Week four. So if 30 minutes in week three is going well and you feel decent, like if you're getting one right every single passage in week three, then don't decrease the timing. But if you're getting like half right, you know, we have a lot of time. This is only, we're in like phase one of our overall MCAT study plan. So don't feel like you have to be getting 90% right. So if you're getting like half, at least most of the time, you're feeling decent about how many you're getting right, then for week four, go down to 15 minutes or 20 minutes. So obviously, you know, like whether you're taking up that full 30 minutes, maybe you're already only using like 20 minutes right now. So for week four, just decrease that time cap by a little bit, whether that's like 15 minute time cap or 20 minute time cap. And if it all goes to crap and all of a sudden you're only answering one question right per passage, then just go back to 30 minutes. It's okay. This is all about like a gradual plan, but if it's all going well and you're still doing decent, then week four, you're going to do all pass like one passage per day. Still continue to read the, um, content review books and like either practice within the books or one Jack Weston pra uh, passage. And you're gonna have a time cap of like 15 minutes or 20 minutes, whichever you want you pick. All right, so within this three month study template that I have, we're on week five is moving on to phase two and that's where you're doing a lot of passage-based practice for overall, so like for your sciences and now for your cars. So if you're in a three month study schedule, like week five, you might be moving on to this, but if you're still in content review phase, like basically for all of content review phase, I would just do one passage a day and just continue to learn and implement the strategies that the books are teaching you. Then phase two, whatever actual week that is for you, for in this example, it's week five. So for week phase two or the first week of phase two, um, you wanna try to do all your passages under 15 minutes. So you might have already been doing that by the end of content review, maybe you're already there. If not, this is your time again to try doing all the passages under 10 minutes. If week five is going well, you can move up to two passages per day with that 15 minute time cap. And then for week six, I'm just gonna start looking off this thing because I've been pausing the video and trying not to like look, but I'm just gonna look, okay? And this will be more efficient for me. Um, week six, you're gonna then move on to trying to do all your passages in 10 minutes. If this has been going super well, you can move up to three passages per day. If you're still like really struggling, then maybe still do two passages per day. But either way, try that time cap of 10 minutes and see how it goes for week six. Also for this week six, you're not, I wouldn't quite yet do the passages back to back, like up till now, like up the, these first six weeks, I would do a passage and then review, do a passage and then review. So for week six, whether that's you're at two or three passages per morning, um, yeah, passage and then review instead of doing them back to back. But then week seven, if the 10 minute time cap is doing well, you're free, feeling pretty good about it, try now doing them back to back. So let's say for week six, you're doing three per day um, with the like, do the passage review, do the passage review. The change you're gonna make for week seven is do three passages in a row or move down to two. Again, this is all about like slowly, like working towards our goal. So we'll say three for example's sake, three passages in a row and then like review them in a row, if that makes sense. Because what we're working towards is test day and like being able to do nine in a row. So at some point, like decently early on, like halfway through phase two, we wanna start doing them back to back to make sure we don't get too used to doing one at a time. Um, so that's week seven. And then week eight is trying to continue to do all passages in 10 minutes and then doing three back to back. So maybe you tried it in week seven and you're like, um, let me move down to two. Like I can do two back to back and then review them. It's a little overwhelming, like to do three in a row, like especially keeping up with this 10 minutes, it's just not happening. For week eight, try to get to that point where you're doing three in a row in under 10 minutes 
and then you review after. So now with the three month study schedule, we're on to phase three and by phase three, uh, for sure, you want to be pretty confident at uh, doing three passages back to back under 10 minutes. So that should be like for all of phase three, you should feel good about that. It shouldn't be like gradually like getting to that point or not being able to blah, blah, blah. By, yeah, just feel really good about it for all of phase three. So with phase two, like in this example, there's only four weeks to get to that point. Like in my actual example, when I took five, le five months to study for the NCAT, I think I was in phase two for like six to eight weeks-ish. So I had a little more than just like that kind of like obviously if you're only studying for three months your progression is going to be faster um and then if you're studying for longer than three months you have a little bit longer progression but you're probably studying longer because you're juggling other things so either way the progression is pretty similar hopefully that all makes sense you have the um spreadsheet to review that so now two really important things to my car strategy is the timing and then how to track your progress so let's talk about timing um I had this kind of weird way to time my passages and I don't know why both times I took the MCAT. The first time I took it was in like 2016 and then by the time I was ready to apply again, I had to take it, I had to start from scratch and take it all over because my score had expired, which I did not even know it was a thing. But it was a thing and I had to do it all over. But anyway, both times I took the MCAT, I did timing this way. I, I don't know that I would recommend it just because it's like super confusing, but that's why I like this long progression um, and I took 13 practice tests so I got a ton of practice with this timing so what I did was if there was a passage with with five questions I had eight and a half minutes six questions ten minutes seven questions eleven and a half minutes it's basically like the amount of questions or amount of time divided by the amount of questions that's how many time you get per question and then I times it by five six or seven or you could just give yourself 10 minutes per passage. So I don't know why I didn't like that second option. It seems it is way more simple because with my way, you have to make like, in order to know when your time is up, like I literally for every single passage took about 10 seconds to be like, okay, like what current time am, am I at? If it was a passage with five questions, then I would subtract eight and a, eight and a half minutes. And then I would write down that number and so that I could like then start the passage and I would know what exact time I needed to be done for. And then if I had six questions, obviously that was easy. I'd be like, okay, subtract 10 and I would write down that number and then start the passage. And then seven questions, like, and I'd have to subtract 11 minutes, 30 seconds. So like, you know, that's not the easiest to do. So anyway, that's what worked for me. You can try it or just do the easy way and do 10 minutes per passage. So. Either way, pick one and by the time you get to phase three, don't change. So you do all that work in phase one and phase two if you follow like that gradual week by week strategy. So do that work to figure out what works for you. And then in phase three, stay the same, don't change. You picked it based on what you know works best for you. Don't be like, Maggie did this, I, maybe I should change. No, it's all about what you think is best for you. You did the work before, so stick with it in phase three and don't change when it's so close to test eight. Okay, and then lastly, how I track my progress, guys. I still have my binder from when I studied for the MCAT. I have all my notes, all my full-length reviews, my handmade flashcards that I did when I hated Anki before I was a med student. This is like reviewing a full-length. Okay, so anyway, I clearly got very detailed in how I reviewed, and I think this is the ultimate key to making sure that you're not your scores, your practice scores aren't staying stagnant. Um, so two things, I had a master list. It was kind of like a culmination of all the things I learned from day to day. And then I also tracked day to day. So I'll just like put this up on the screen so you don't have to try to read it when I'm holding it up. But you can see that like day to day, I was, here it is. So like Tuesday, 218, I did seven questions. It took me 15 minutes and 18 seconds. So this was February 18th. So I was like super, that was like content review. Um, because I had just started my new EMT job and got, finally got my schedule like the end of January. So I wasn't even like studying full time or like in my routine, my rhythm until early February. So was, I'm actually surprised it was that fast, <laughs> that early on. So you can see 219 was five questions I did at 840. Um, I think in January I was still doing a lot of cars practice because I was like starting my content review. But um, yeah, so I wrote down how long it took me so I could track like 
I had a good visual of like over time, like how am I doing with timing? Am I totally like, do I need to go back to square one and figure something else out because I can't finish any of these under time? Or am I doing okay? And like, it was very up and down, but this was February, this was super early. So tracked my timing every single day. And then, um, so you can see I got 76% right, 86% right 71 percent, 85 so i tracked how many i got right and then i gave myself like little notes on like what to do tomorrow or like tips to keep in mind so i wrote down work on predicting answer tomorrow because one of the things i learned in the book was before you look at the answer choices try like read the question and then try to think of like what the answer will be and then look at the question. So I wrote down just like a reminder because apparently when I was reviewing how I did, I was like, oh, I probably might've got that actually easier if I had tried to predict instead of getting skewed by the answer choices. Um, and then only predict, only pick an answer in the correct paragraph. Oh, I made that mistake. That was such a common mistake. Sometimes in the question stem, they'll be like, um, they'll ask you a question that refers to a paragraph. And then like one of the answer choices would refer to something in a different paragraph. And so often I'd be like, I could easily cross that out because that, that wasn't even in the relevant paragraph. So that was like a really good one. You should let me know below if you want me to do, I could do a whole video on like common mistakes or like common things to watch out for and not miss questions. I don't, my brain's not working for how to word that, but you know what I mean? Um, even if it's an inference question, there still needs to be supporting evidence in the passage. Oh, that was a big one too. Like if you answer a question, there's no supporting evidence versus there were some that were, oh my gosh, like this is like bringing up so many memories. Anyway, you get the point. Maybe I should add that to the download if I remember, but I don't know that I will. Um, okay. Then obviously when I did full length, um, exams, I wrote little notes. So, um, I wrote out many little paragraphs. Like I got very into making sure I knew why I missed this. So I wrote, the answer I picked was very close to what the author thought, but had a small detail that made it wrong. She believed that improvisation was good for three reasons, not that one reason that was more beneficial than yours, than any other. Not that one reason was more beneficial than any others. Oh, so the question probably said, or the answer choice I picked probably said like, this is the best reason, but no, like when I went through the passage, it was clearly like, the author believed that there were three good reasons so like yeah so yeah apparently there's a lot i could go into i thought i was going to give you all the tips and there's still more to give um okay and then lastly my master list so i made this list based on like maybe at the end of the oh it's on the back like maybe at the end of the week end of the month and every few days something i would go back and be like what are the top reasons i'm missing questions and whatever themes came up, I would curate it into this like master list that I made for myself. So I'll just screenshot this and you can read it. But I highly recommend making your own master list based on specific reasons why you are missing the questions. Like you have to do your own work of reviewing, knowing why you're missing them and then making a master list like this. So you could copy mine, but I would recommend instead following the same like strategies to be able to make one specific to you. Um, but clearly these are things that kept coming up over and over. And so what I would do after making this is that every morning I started with one hours of cars, as you'll see in the study schedule template. And, um, before I would start my three cars passages, I would read this and I would get in the mindset to remind myself to do these things. And then I would start my three cars passages and then review them and like this whole thing. So anyway, Oh, that was a lot. I hope this video was like, truly so incredibly helpful for you um try these out let me know how they go let me know any other cars tips strategies questions anything you have below and i will answer all of them and yeah i'm a little i've been talking for a really long time okay anyway you don't care um be sure to subscribe if this video was helpful and i will see you in the next one